There we go. All right. Welcome, guys, to our very first Code Ninjas Monterey live stream. What we're doing is we are doing a preview of our Minecraft Create camp here at uh, Code Ninjas. And what Minecraft Create is, is it's a camp where ninjas will be able to use multiple programs to build objects and import them into their very own Minecraft world. And I'll be walking you guys through uh, the very first day of that camp. Uh, on the post uh, that this live stream is attached to, you'll find links to all the technologies that we're using today. And before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and hand off the stream to our very own Mr. Villarreal, owner of Code Ninjas Monterey, to say a few words. Looking right over here. Camera here. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, Chelsea and I want to thank everybody uh, for for tuning in um, and kind of taking part in something um, that obviously we feel is much needed uh, in the community. Um, you know, here at Code Ninjas Monterey, uh, we are all about uh, community and ensuring that every student. Um, you know, gets that educationally based coding opportunity uh, that they deserve. Um, and with the recent uh, kind of health scare with the coronavirus, we just want to make sure that, you know, there is a community of students out there, uh, you know, in Marina, Monterey, Pacific Grove, Carmel, Seaside, Salinas, um, and of course, you know, Monterey, um, students who, you know, really are looking for um, that educationally based lesson. Um, so we figured that we would roll out a series uh, every single day. We'd love for you to join us at four o'clock, uh, Monday through Friday. And we're just gonna really use this platform to kind of show you a preview of what we have in store for the summer um, so you can make decisions when summertime comes and all of this hopefully, uh, God willing, blows over. Um, but every lesson will be educationally based and you'll be able to take away something uh, from each session with Sensei Julian. Uh, and we are really grateful um, that he is giving up his time um, to share his wealth of knowledge with the community. Um, of course, if you have any questions, we'll put uh, our information um, in a link where you can uh, reach out to us uh, and of course tell everybody about it. Uh, we just kind of want to share the word and make sure that we are together as a community. We are praying for everybody uh, and we really uh, hope to see you soon here at Code Ninjas Monterey. Okay, I'll take it. I'll leave it back with Julian. All right. All right, thank you, Mr. Villarreal, for that uh, quick little uh, introduction. So let's get straight into it. Here we are, first day of Minecraft Camp. What are we doing? What even is Minecraft Camp? So what Minecraft Camp is, essentially is, is it's taking three technologies and it's combining them into one camp. Uh, so what the promise of Minecraft Create is, is if your kid can imagine it, then they can build it and they can import it into their Minecraft world. So it's essentially learning 3D modeling with Tinkercad. Then they export their 3D model into a block object. Uh, Tinkercad allows us to take our 3D modeled objects and directly turn them into Minecraft objects. We take that file and we're going to upload it into MC Edit right here. So this is an MC Edit version of my Minecraft world. Once we take our Minecraft object, we import it into here. And from there, we'll be able to import it into our Minecraft game right here. And we'll be able to see the, the 3D model, model that we created in Tinkercad in our Minecraft world. So I'm gonna walk you through the very first project that the kids will do at a Minecraft Create Camp, which is creating a playground. So I have here, <laughs> Happy Children Park. I'm gonna go ahead and show it off to you guys. This is the completed version right here. Tinkercad is a free program that anyone at home can make an account for or and use to learn 3D modeling. It was designed by the creators of Autodesk Fusion and, and um, many other uh, Autodesk products that are specifically used for manufacturing and design of products. They designed Tinkercad to be a way for children to easily and excessively, excessively get into 3D modeling. So here I have a 3D object, or multiple 3D objects, making up a playground. 
So here we've got some, uh, a slide, here we have a seesaw, and here we have some monkey bars. Very simple objects, but when combined together like this, they form a playground. And if we look over here in the top right corner, we have a blocks tool right here, a little Minecraft pickaxe. I'm sure your kids might recognize that. When I click on this here, it blockifies our 3D objects and turns them into Minecraft objects. So right here, all of these color blocks will be lava. Um, all these color blocks will be lapis lazuli and all these will be ice. And we can change them to be really any block we want. So there, I just turned my slide from lava into redstone ore, though a lava block us, a lava slide does sound really cool. So I'm going to be going ahead and starting from scratch with a brand new, uh, brand new 3D model, and I'll be creating this uh, this playground from scratch with you guys. Let's go ahead and go back to mine. New design. Okay, so the very first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna explain what the different uh, UI elements of Tinkercad are. So over here on the right, we have our object library. We can switch it between the different uh, libraries that Tinkercad makes available to us, but today we're just gonna be staying within basic shapes. The only shapes we're really gonna be using today to build what we need are going to be the box and the cylinders. And maybe some of the ones if we wanna try uh, making some of the stuff, we'll probably use the torus, uh, but really box and cylinders, you can make just about most things that you're ever gonna come across in real life. So here we are, let's go ahead and take this box. I'm gonna use this box to make sort of a platform to build the rest of my objects on top of. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flatten this out by grabbing the different, ob uh, by grabbing this point here. So navigating inside of uh, Tinkercad can be a little confusing if you're brand new to 3D modeling, but all you really need to know is when you right click and you hold, and you, that lets you rotate your camera around the center of your workspace. So right now I'm rotating around my block right here. I can grab my block by clicking and dragging it. And all these different points represent different, uh, different uh, parts of it. So this top point right here uh, lets me expand it on the Y axis, or I guess it would be the Z axis. This point right here lets me expand it on the X axis, X axis and the Y axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna expand it nice and wide in order to make a platform to build the rest of my objects on top of. And I'm gonna make it nice and flat, only give it about a thickness of maybe two. There we go. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna start grabbing objects and I'm gonna build the very first thing we're gonna make, which I think is probably the simplest. It's going to be our, uh, our, our seesaw. So it's, what, what does a seesaw look like really? All a seesaw really is, is a long plank balancing on a middle post. So for a long plank, all we really need is another box. So we're gonna go ahead and raise up this box by grabbing this little point right here. This lets us elevate our box. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this over to the side over here. So now that I have my box over here, I need to transform it and modify the different lengths of each side so that I can, so that it looks a little bit more like a plank. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color as well so that it doesn't blend in so much with my platform. So when I click over here, these are the different properties of the shape that we have here. Oh, thank you, Patricia, very much for liking uh, the Code Ninjas page. We're glad you're here. So here we have our block right here. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color. When we have a block, or an object selected, we're able to see the different properties of it right here. So if I look at this one right here, I could change the color of it by clicking here, but right now I'm gonna modify this block. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna make it green. That way I give myself some nice contrast between this block right here and the platform I'm using to build on top of it. I'm gonna take our 
uh, our block, and I'm going to expand it, make it nice and long, and then I'm going to make it. I'm going to shorten it. I'm also going to make it not quite so wide. There you go. Now it looks a little bit more like a plank of wood, something that you would see on a seesaw. I'm going to lower it down so it's not quite so high up. If I click on uh, this cube over here on the top left, this cube lets me rotate around same as I would if I right clicked and held down, but I can get a perfect angle on the object that I'm working on just simply by using this. So I can get a perfect 45 degree angle here, or I can get a perfect angle here so that I only, so that I'm only um, adjusting one axis at a time. So here I want to lift up our plank, a couple more units. So now I have a little bit of a gap here that I can use to place something for our little seesaw to teeter on. All I'm going to use is going to be a cylinder. So I'm going to take a cylinder object, just click and drag it into our scene. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to rotate it on its side. Right here, let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. There we go. And I'll drag it over here right to where our seesaw is. Oops. So whenever you make a mistake, don't worry about it. So right now, I've, I've accidentally flung my cylinder across the, uh, across the way to the other side of the map. Not a big deal. Whenever we mess up, this is our savior right here, undo. Control Z if you want to use the keyboard shortcut. So right there, this brought our, um, brought our little seesaw cylinder back. I'm going to go ahead and lower it back down. I'm going to lower it to under our seesaw right here. But as you can see, it's a little big. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it smaller on each side by, let's have it first. Let's go 10. There we go. 10, 10, and for the height, 10 as well. There we go. Much better. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it along here and place it roughly in the middle. So there now we have the teeter for our seesaw. I think I'll go ahead and raise it up a little bit. There we go. Just move it over to the side a little bit and perfect. So our seesaw is almost done. I'm just gonna add a couple of handlebars so that any kids that might be swinging on this uh, seesaw have something to hold on to. So the object I'm gonna use for this is gonna be the torus. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize this. This a torus is basically just like a donut shape. What I'm gonna take do is I'm gonna take this torus, I'm gonna to rotate it 90 degrees like this, and I'm gonna have half of it submerged inside of our inside of our, our plank right here, and the top half of it up above so that any child holding up, using it could hold on to it. Oops, let me go ahead and undo that. There we go. Now I'm just going to move it over. Right about here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and resize it so that it matches the, the, the size of, that I need it to be. So go ahead and squish it down. Make it shorter. There we go, just about the width of the plank itself. And then I can just drop it straight into our plank right here. And there you go, we have a nice little handlebar. So I worked so hard creating this handlebar. What I need to do now is I need to make a copy of it over here. I could go through all that work of just doing all those steps again, but I'm lazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select this object here. So I know it's selected because it's highlighted right here. And the shape is the same color as the properties tab right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna select the copy tool from the toolbar. Or if I'm savvy, I'll go ahead and hit control C. So I've hit control C and now it's copied to my clipboard. 
And what I can do now is I can paste it. So now I have an exact copy of my torus or my handlebars really over here and I can move it and slide this copy to the other end. Work smarter, not harder. Uh, I'm actually, uh, Patricia, we're building a playground structure. Uh, so we're building a playground and this first part is the seesaw. So we've just completed the seesaw part of it. I know it doesn't look too impressive, but everything has humble beginnings. And as they progress through the camps, they do create more progressively and progressively complex projects. So we've got a seesaw. Let's go ahead and make some monkey bars. A monkey bars are even simpler, I would say, at least, than our seesaw. Our monkey bars are just going to be a, a couple of stilts uh, supporting our monkey bars. And then we have the monkey bars themselves. And those are just going to be cylinders rotated uh, to for as handles. So all I need to do is I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to make each one four and four, and that should get us a nice kind of like little stilt. I'm gonna change the colors so that it's a little easier to see across our, uh, our yellow work plane. All right, and we're gonna use that tool that we learned, that we used just, again, just now, again, and we're gonna copy this little post right here after I make it a little taller. Let's go ahead and make it 40. There you go, it's a nice tall monkey bars. I'm gonna select this little post right here. I'm gonna co copy it and then paste it. So now I have my two monkey bars right here. So thankfully, Tinkercad lets me know exactly how much I'm moving an object from its original position. The number on the right is how much I've moved it up and down. The number on the left is how much I've moved it to the left and to the right. I wanna make sure that I don't move it up and down too much. So I'm gonna try and keep it on that zero. And then I'm gonna move it apart, let's say 30. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna paste it again. And these are gonna be the posts for the other side of our monkey bars. I'm gonna make sure that these are aligned with my other bar. So I'm gonna move it until it gets to the zero point on one axis and just move it about 60 units away. I'll paste it again. Oops, accidentally grabbed our work plane there. I'll go ahead and undo that. I'll grab my post again, Make, being careful not to move it too much. I'm gonna move it 30 away because, just because that's exactly how much I moved the post away over here. All right, so now we have our four posts for our monkey bars. And this next part is actually gonna be pretty simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna copy and paste one of these posts again. Except what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees this way like this. Lift it up to the top of the monkey bars, the top of the post. And I'm gonna move it along right over here. Let's see, let's try and get that a little lined a little better. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I just grab this point right here and I'm gonna elongate our post right there. And then all I need to do is I'm gonna copy and paste it again. So I'm gonna select this object, copy, paste, and there we go, I have the second part of my monkey bars. And there we go. It's already starting to look more and more like monkey bars. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take some cylinders. I'll be rotating that 90 degrees this way, lifting it up. I'm gonna be moving it right over here. And so all I'm gonna do with the cylinders, I'm gonna resize it, make it a lot, uh, a lot shorter, a little bit longer, and a lot less wide, and a lot thinner. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it along sections right here to make 
uh, the rest of our monkey bars. So here, I'll go ahead and make it f five units tall. And as for the length, I'll go ahead and shorten it to five as well. I like to try to use this, the same units as much as I can. Here we go, now we're ready for the width of it. Let's see if we, can, if we can't still use five. Make like a nice little, little, nice little circle tube. Okay, that works. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this right over there. It really is uh, kind of a feel thing when we're not working with exact blueprints. Oops, it looks like I elongated it along the wrong axis. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this undo button right here. Undo button, saving lives yet again. So it's a little hard for me to click on the different uh, different axes here, the different points. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in by moving my scroll wheel. And now I have a much better viewpoint on exactly what it is I'm working with. And up closer I can see that it's not quite aligned perfectly, but that's okay. I can go ahead and fix that later. So I'm gonna take this point, I'm gonna elongate it so that it's touching both of these posts right here. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste our little monkey bar rung right here and copy and paste it along all of these sections right here. There we go. Oh, this one looks like it pasted it in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this paste because I don't really wanna have to um, rotate it if I don't really need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one right here, copy it, paste it. And there we go, I've got my new monkey bar rung. Copy, paste, and we've got our last one. Go ahead and zoom out so you guys can see the finished but somewhat rough monkey bars right here. So here we go, we've got our monkey bars, we've got a seesaw, our playground's really starting to shape up. But no playground is complete without a slide. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a slide. So for our slide, all we're gonna do is we're gonna make a ladder going up right along about here. And then we're gonna have some, uh, some boxes essentially angled at 45 degrees downwards like this into the ground. And that'll be our slide. So I already have a ladder here because all monkey bars really are is a ladder from a different perspective. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you about one of the first very powerful tools that we teach at Minecraft Create, the grouping tool. So I'm gonna group together these monkey bars and these posts into one single object that I can move all at once. Because if I try to drag all these objects, it's very easy for me to make a mistake or, or for them to become misaligned. So what we do is we group these objects together so that we can treat them as just one big object. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna carefully, holding the shift button down, I'm gonna select the different parts that I wanna to group together which are these two bars, these two posts, and each one of the rungs on our monkey on our uh, monkey bars. So as you can see here, see as you can see now, over here in our properties tab, it now says shapes seven. That's because I have seven objects selected: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those seven objects are going to be grouped together using this feature here, which is now available to us. When I group them together. They become one solid object and even become, and then even get one solid color. So I'm going to take this one solid object, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And now I essentially have another set of monkey bars, but what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to use it for our ladder. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this rotate tool right here. Go ahead and zoom out a little bit so I can see it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees kind of want it going at a bit of an angle towards the center of our workspace. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it right here as well. 
There we go. So now I have my ladder, except it's kind of floating off the ground. So I go ahead and I'll push it down. There we go. That looks good. So now what I'll do is I'm actually going to be even lazier. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy it and paste this yet again. And I'm going to use this as kind of a, uh, just a starting point for our, uh, for our ladder. So what I'm going to do for our slide, I'm going to use this as a starting point for our ladder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this, rotate this ladder. Let's see if I can't get a, a decent rotation on it. Hmm. Oh, I see. Interesting. So since I've rotated this ladder 45 degrees along that axis, I might find it, it a little bit difficult to use it as my slide. So I'm going to renege on that. And I'm going to go ahead and delete those. So I'm going to take a new box object and I'll use this as my slide. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 45 degrees. I'm going to lift it up to the top of my ladder. There we go. Let's go ahead and line the top of the box up with the top of the ladder. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my box so that it's facing. There we go. Why don't I just do this? That'll be much easier. There we go. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate our, my box right here so that it's facing this slight angle there. And now I'm gonna change the dimensions of my box so that it looks a lot more like the, the rail, the rail of a slide. I suppose it's called a rail. So I'll go ahead and extend this out and now I'll rotate it. Let's say 22 degrees right here. And I'll just go ahead and line it up right here and now all I need to do is extend it until it hits the floor. There we go. So I, nice and tall, move it down. Move it down yet again. If I wanna be a little more precise about it, I can click over here and I can see the exact height of my ladder. And when I click on my ladder, I click on that little height square right here. I can see the number representing the height of our square. And I'll just go ahead and punch in that height right here. And there we go. We've got the height of our ladder right there. And it's not quite lined up, so let's go ahead and line it up. I'll actually lower it a little bit just so that it lines itself up with this ladder up a little better. So go ahead and make it a little wider right here. So now we've got our slide. I don't think it's a very safe slide. It doesn't have any railings for our, uh, to keep kids from flying over on the sides. So that's what we're gonna fix right now. We'll go ahead and fix that part by making some nice railings over here so kids don't fall off. So what I'll do is I'll take another box well, actually, what would be smarter would, to do would be to make a copy of our slide part of our slide right here. Copy, paste. So now I have an exact copy of it. And all I really need to do to make some railings are just going to be to make it a lot thinner right here, move it to the side, and raise it to the same level, and raise it to be a little bit higher than our railings. Than our, than our actual slide itself. So I'll move it over just a little bit just to, oops, go ahead and undo that. So go ahead and move it just a little bit over to the side and I'll move it down. There you go, so now I've got a nice little railing for my slide. Go ahead and try to just get it nice and lined up there. I'll take that. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste it for the other side. There we go. So now our slide 
has some railings, kids won't be falling off, parents are thankful. And this is essentially where I would accept, this is the part of our Minecraft Create Camp where I would accept that a child is done with their project and say, okay, your project is ready. You can now import that into your Minecraft world. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this Minecraft pickaxe right here, blocks. And behind the scenes, Tinkercad is going to do the calculations and convert our 3D objects into blocks that can be imported into a Minecraft world. So our beautiful playground becomes a nice blocky aesthetic playground that we can see in Minecraft. But as you can see, we've lost a lot of the detail in the conversion from 3D objects to uh, Minecraft blocks. So what we can do is over here in this section right here in this menu, we can adjust the detail level of our Minecraft conversion with trying to do one-to-one -one conversion with blocks, two blocks. So this is a little more detailed as you can see, some of our monkey bars came back on the least detailed version. We only have maybe a few rungs on our monkey bars, but when I move to this step right here, we get some more, we still retain some of that detail. But the trade-off is the more detail we keep, the bigger our Minecraft objects end up being. Because in the world of Minecraft, one block is decently big. So this is a Minecraft tree to scale with our playground. Each one of our objects is pretty large already, even at the least detailed. So when we move up to the second most detailed, this tree become, starts to become really, really small relative to the size of our playground. If we go to the most detailed version three times, it's gonna take a while to load, but once it does, you'll see that the tree is now dwarfed by our monoliths of, of, a, play, of a playground here. And it would take quite a long time to uh, traverse this in Minecraft. Imagine being just a little guy right here in Minecraft and you see these gigantic structures. It makes for a pretty epic setting, but in this case, I'm not gonna go with the most detailed. I'm just gonna go with these two times right here. Two times will usually get the job done. But we're not quite done here. We can't just export and export our, uh, our object and call it a day. We need to make sure that our, our, our Minecraft blocks aren't gonna be something destructive like fire or lava or even TNT. So I don't want the sides of my slide to be filled with water, but I do want them to stay that color, so I'll pick a lapis lazuli. And for the ice, I don't want the ice to melt. So again, I think I'll pick some diamond. The rest I think is fine. Uh, whatever is orange, this is orange right here, will become pumpkins. Actually, I'll say it's glowstone, there we go. Uh, the yellow ladders over here will become sponges and our base right here will become redstone blocks. So I'm fine with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now going to export my model and it's saving right here to a folder. Uh, it saves it, saves it with the name Shiny Vilhelmo, Vil, Vilhelmo, which just happens to be the name of our project here. But I'm gonna go ahead and rename it to Playground. Save, it's been saved to my computer. And now it's time for us to move on to the second program that we use in our Minecraft Create Camp. The first one being Tinkercad. Tinkercad is what we spend a majority of our time in, uh, spending lots of time perfecting our 3D objects. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the second program that we use. We use a program called MC Edit. MC Edit is a program that lets us edit and import objects change spawn points. It lets us mess with our Minecraft worlds in a much more powerful way than just by using commands in the command line tool of Minecraft or by going into creative mode and, uh, go and, and using tools there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna import my object. So this is a, a demo world that I've already set up. Once you import my object, we have a bunch of tools down here. The only one that we're really interested in right now is the import tool. When I click on import, it's gonna pull up uh, my file manager and ask me to locate the schematic file of 
uh, the 3D model of a 3D model that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the folder that I've set up for this, which is right here, live stream, playground schematics. So this is uh, all the detail and the data for the 3D model playground that we created. So when I click open, I now have, let me go ahead and zoom out so you guys can see. I now have a 3D model in Minecraft of my playground. So I'm gonna look for a spot that's green. That means it's okay for me to place it there. Let me go ahead and put it, I think I'll put it right over here. Once I click import, it's going to import my gigantic 3D playground into Minecraft. So I'm gonna go ahead and import it now. Depending on the size of it, it might take a little bit. You can see it popping in right there. And there we go, now it's complete. So before I can open it in Minecraft, I need to now take this menu, go ahead and save it. It's going to save this. It might take a little bit depending on how powerful your computer is. There we go. And once I feel secure that it's nice and saved, I'll go ahead and quit out of MC Edit. We really only use MC Edit in this camp to import our 3D objects. I'll go ahead and quit out of that. And right here, I have the Minecraft launcher ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch Minecraft Java Edition. For our camp, you do unfortunately need a copy of Minecraft Java Edition. Um, we wouldn't be able to accept uh, uh, a Bedrock Edition copy or uh, even a Pocket Edition. So we have a, a couple of accounts here, but we really do recommend that uh, children have their own Minecraft account Minecraft Java account before signing up for our Minecraft camp, for our Minecraft camp. So I'm going to go ahead and expand right here so we can get a nice big view of our Minecraft. So right here I have my demo world. I'm going to go ahead and load into it. So here we go. Big, beautiful Minecraft as we all know and love it. And if I turn around, I should see my playground. And there it is, moment of truth, the playground structure that we just created in Tinkercad realized in Minecraft. And this is, and the, here they are. Here's our diamond blocks right there, just broke off a little bit of our handlebar, that's okay. We've got our base made of redstone right here. We've got the little teeter-totter for our, our seesaw made out of glowstone. Here's our monkey bars made out of sponge. And over there, here's our slide. Maybe I could put some Minecraft ladders on here and climb up our slide and jump down here. That'd be pretty fun. And so this is the bulk of what we do here at Minecraft Create Camp. But there's one more thing. Here at Code Ninjas, we're always trying to innovate and we're always trying to do more than just what's given to us in, in curriculum guides and in books. And so we've been developing a, a modding curriculum for Minecraft Camp. And so I'm gonna give you guys here at the stream a special uh, little sneak preview at some of the Minecraft modding that we've been up to. So using a program called mCreator, we've messed around and we've created a couple of really cool mods that I think you guys are really gonna like. Um, this particular mod pack we made for one of our ninja's birthdays, their name, uh, uh, Riley. We, we made this mod pack where we created some birthday armor, some birthday, a birthday helmet, uh, and we created a custom bow that we used to, that we use called Thorshot. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to tell you what, guys what Thorshot does, but Thorshot is a very special bow that I think the God of Thunder, Thor himself, would be very proud of. I'm going to go ahead and give it a chance to load.
Thank you, Bob Lockwood, for following us here at Code Ninjas Monterey. So here we go. This is our Minecraft world. This doesn't have our 3D models imported into it, but we could just as easily, easily import our 3D models into this world. But as you can see, we have a new option here called Mods. I'm going to go ahead and load up our Minecraft world featuring our the mods that we made here. All right, so right now it's nighttime. Let's go ahead and find some mobs. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the brightness on so that you people at home can see a little bit brighter. Let's go ahead and turn this up 75%. Much better. Okay, so right here we've got, what is this? Some kind of ice golem, an ice skeleton, very cool. Uh, I'm sure your kids at home probably know what this guy is. So we've got all kinds of bad guys here that would want nothing more than to take our stuff and kill us here at night. But we are not helpless. We have the Thor shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Thor shot, a very special bow, grab some arrows. Go ahead and mute this. So with Thor shot, I have nothing to fear here. Let me go ahead and turn the volume down for Minecraft a little bit. There we go. So with Thorshot, we have nothing to fear because this very powerful bow has something special about it. I'm gonna go ahead and take aim at this mob right here. That's right, Thorshot, when you shoot this bow and it hits an enemy or hits a block on the ground, lightning strikes, and there's an explosion with the same power as a TNT block. As you can see, just one hit, and that mob was taken care of quite nicely. This is a bow that I think even Thor would be proud to use. All right, and that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream here, checking out the first day of our Minecraft Create Camp and even a special sneak preview of Minecraft modding here at Code Ninjas. All right, I'll go ahead and open it up to Q&A and I'll answer some questions from the chat until about five o'clock and then we'll go ahead and end the stream. Yeah, I'm live right now. I'm just waiting for questions to pop in the chat, answer them. If there's no questions, I'll just go ahead and, answer, and end the stream. And there's a bit of a delay though, so it could take them some time before they here. So the apps that we used to make uh, the, our 3D models and uh, the mods are listed in the description of the post for this live video, but I'll go ahead and say them right now. For the 3D modeling, we used Tinkercad. To import our 3D model into Minecraft, we used MC Edit. Then we used Minecraft to go ahead and launch that world and play around in it. And then to make our mods, we used a program called mCreator. Good question.
A husk. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, this would only work in Java edition. Oh, astray. Okay, thank you. I'll have to. I'll have to catch up on my. Uh... My Minecraft mob linga. I'll have to check my dictionary. All right, looks like we don't have any more questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna end the stream. If you guys have any questions watching this video back uh, after, after we're done, uh, go ahead and leave a comment here and, we'll be, and I'll check the back at this post periodically and I'll be ha happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow at four o'clock when we'll be previewing another one of our awesome camps. All right, thank you guys very much.